if my great grandma was still alive, she would be 125 years old. She was living next door until I was 10 years old. Every Sunday morning, I went to her place and we had a traditional Japanese breakfast together. Today, I recall the memory and show you what she was eating for her breakfast back then. At the end of this video, I'll show you her unique way of eating, so stay tuned. Starting with making rice porridge. Rinse the rice and soak them in water for one hour. Drain the water and transfer into the pot. Add water. I do one part of rice and five parts of water. Once it comes to a gentle boil, reduce the heat to low and mix the rice to prevent the rice from sticking at the bottom. Partially cover with the lid, then cook it all for about 35 minutes. Meanwhile, let's work on the boiled tofu. In a pot, add one and a half cups of water. In goes kombu, which is a type of seaweed. We go through a lot of this on this channel. Kombu is gonna lightly flavor the tofu. Soak it for 30 minutes and we'll come back later. Next, let's make turnip salad with pickled plum dressing. Do you guys have access to this pickled plum? This is something I always have in my fridge. It's salty and tart. Remove the seed, then crush it until it becomes puree like consistency. If you don't have mortar and pestle, you can just chop them with the knife. I use this mortar and pestle quite often for making homemade sesame dressing. I put the shop link in case you want one. Add two tablespoons of mirin. Just a heads up, mirin contains alcohol, so if you care about the alcohol, you can just cook off the alcohol for 15 seconds or so in the pot. Even if you skip the process, you don't taste the alcohol at all. Then add one teaspoon of soy sauce and one tablespoon of toasted sesame oil. Mix them again as you keep mushing the pickled plum, it will enhance more flavor. To go with this dressing, I have this turnip. Already washed, cut off the leaf, and we are going to save the leaf for miso soup later. Cut in half, flat side down, then thinly slice them. You can peel the skin if you want, but I keep those for the extra fiber. My great grandma always had rice porridge, miso soup. Boiled tofu with loads of toppings and some type of vegetable side dish, which was a Japanese pickle for most of the time. I have three Japanese pickle recipes, so leaving the link for you in the description box. Then thinly slice a shiso leaf. Pile them up and roll, then shred it. Shiso leaf is a very popular Japanese herb. I think perilla would be the similar one. Let me know if you come up with any good substitution for shiso leaf. Put turnip, pickled plum dressing, and shiso leaf all together. Toss them to coat. And have a taste and adjust the taste with salt if it's needed. You can make ahead of time. If that's the case, I suggest to keep the dressing and the veggies separately because once you toss them together, water will continue to seep out and your salad ends up watery and bland, just like this. By the time your porridge should be done cooking, mix the rice from bottom to top and pop the lid and set this aside. Porridge is better for digestion, so my grand grandma preferred porridge more. If you are looking for regular fluffy sticky rice, I have a sticky sushi rice tutorial also linked in the description box. Let's check on the kombu. It's been fully hydrated and expanded into double the size. Add sliced leek, and you can also use spring onion here. Pop the lid and cook it off until the leek is cooked through. I keep simmer since it's easy to boil over. For miso soup, I'm going to add daikon radish. Shred daikon radish into much thin sticks. Speaking of my great grandma, she was always wearing a kimono, which is a traditional Japanese costume. She put on makeup every day, even though she had no plan to go out. She ate only traditional Japanese food, which is based on vegetables and fish. I never saw her eating ramen or curry rice, which lots of Japanese enjoy nowadays. In fact, she was living by herself until she was 95 years old. 
throughout I convert it into the water and place the dashi packet which is a soup stock base. I have more miso soup ideas. If you want a detailed direction, please watch more on that video. Pop the lid and cook it until the daikon radish is slightly wilted. Back to boiled tofu. Cut tofu into big chunks. I'm using silken tofu. When the leek is tender, add tofu and pop the lid. Off the heat immediately and just warm it up with the residual heat. That way, tofu will stay nice and creamy. To along with the boiled tofu, I have this myoga, which is a family of ginger. It's crunchy and a little peppery in my opinion. Finely chop them. I also have a ginger. We're gonna enjoy it raw, so peel the outer thick skin completely to remove the fibrous part, then finely mince them. Once your daikon radish is cooked through, remove the dashi packet, then add the leaf of turnip and dissolve the miso paste. I love to load up many veggies into my miso soup. On the other hand, my great-grandma liked to keep it simple, like just tofu and wakame seaweed or spinach and radishes. Lastly, add dried wakame seaweed and leave it for a minute. Now time to plate everything, but this is not the end. Later, I'm going to show you how to eat all dishes, so stay tuned. On the porridge, scoop the boiled tofu, then load up generous heaps of toppings. First with the chopped spring onion and some myoga and ginger. If you're not plant-based, add bonito flakes for the extra umami taste. The tofu itself doesn't have much taste and texture so that these toppings will really shine through and make it more enjoyable to eat. Drizzle some soy sauce, then mix everything together. I think this is not the most polite way to eat, but this is the way that she enjoyed it.
As you can see, Japanese switch the dishes and enjoy a little bit of everything each time. In this way, you will feel satisfied without eating too many portions because it's gonna take you longer to finish. My mom told me I was the only one who loves veggies more than meat or fish out of my four siblings. One of the reasons why I love vegetables so much is the experience with my great-grandma. Having a conversation together while dining in the same table with her was something very special. That moment still stays in my heart, so I wanted to share the memory and recipes with you guys. Please share with anyone who is looking for the new way of healthy eating. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you are new. See you soon. Bye bye. Matane.